um, of course, we've uh, seen some really unprecedented environment in the uh, past few quarters. Uh, by the way, not only the COVID-19 pandemic, but also um, in the third quarter, uh, the uh, massive over oversupply in oil markets reached us and uh, affected our natural resources business. And that's why um, the uh, uh, maintenance of um, EBITDA margin on um, previous year level after nine months is uh, particularly noteworthy. And the background to that is that um, our care chemicals business performed um, extremely resilient. Here, specifically the consumer-facing um, um, segments, including personal care, home care, um, and hygiene um, articles, is, of course, something which is more asked for also in these times. Our catalysis business is still solid after nine months. And as I said, the natural resources has been a bit more affected in the third quarter. But the first reason for the um, margin um, um, preservation is particularly the high specialty ca character of our core continuing portfolio. And the second one is, of course, the, uh, the significant amount of programs which we run in terms of um, ensuring the safety to our employees, um, maintaining business continuity to our customers. We did not have any major disruption on our incoming or outbound um, supply chains. And at the same time, we run some significant cost mitigation and cash programs. Stephen, can you get into how strong you are seeing the signals from Asia? We've been talking this morning about some of the differences that are playing out in that corridor because of coronavirus. I'm just comparing your statement from the last, uh, last quarter to this quarter. When it comes to China and India, you're now talking about reporting double-digit growth. Last time around, you were saying demonstrating solid growth. So it seems as though those corridors may have improved for you. Uh, yes, that's totally right. I mean, um, uh, from, from a regional perspective, really the uh, COVID-19 impact and the demand impact hit us most in uh, classical Europe and North America. Um, but in Asia, we were uh, very resilient after the first uh, uh, nine months uh, with um, a performance of 2% uh, in local currency improvement in Asia Pacific. And that was mainly driven by China. China, of course, with the prolongation of the Chinese New Year into the epidemic and then pandemic, um, has really recovered very fast and is um, up on and above normal levels. Um, that means we are, have been growing after nine months by 10% in China and even in the, in the third quarter particularly by 27%. So in China we can see really a growth um, uh, and, and a more resilient in COVID-19 times, plus of course uh, the reaction to our significant investment and focus into that area over the recent years. So it's an absolute um, a core of our um, five-pillar strategy and it's paying back now um, for us having the assets and capabilities on in the country to um, take advantage of that development. And in India, I would say it's it's a bit um, of a mixed effect because there was just also in the third quarter particularly um, a strong uh, demand for catalyst in the uh, in the mobility sector, uh, which drove the third quarter and India, therefore, um, recording also significant um, increases after nine months, while the rest of Asia, and particularly the more... Um, um, yeah, Historic strong uh, countries like Japan and Korea right. um, have been also negative to us. Right.